Skyrim recently became 10 years old, and with it came the new Anniversary Edition, a final DLC created by Bethesda and modders alike that brings a massive selection of new content into your already expansive world. From uncovering the Mythic Dawn's malevolent mission to unleash the moors of oblivion beneath Skyrim's surface, to undertaking an arduous journey back into the mind of madness through the Guardians of the Shivering Isles. Today, we're going to take a look at every single new piece of content added within Skyrim's penultimate release in one of the coolest videos I've ever created. Why choose this as our goal? The creatures of Nerd. All men are kings. If he breathes, he is sick. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Your son's in a room, all right? <laughs> Skyrim's Anniversary Edition comes with loads of new content, but even without purchasing anything if you already owned SSE, there are a few new additions that we've all been granted for free that I think would be a fitting place to start. So let's begin with the one most synonymous with its release, and that's going to be... Fishing. Skyrim is now home to a select number of locations in which you are now able to cast your line. And upon getting a catch, you have the chance to obtain a bunch of treasure, fish or junk, dependent on the weather, time of day and quality of rod used. But it doesn't just end there. The Rift and Fishery has now fittingly been expanded in order to be your source of piscary related quests and also allowing for things like rare fishing spot location maps and the introduction to aquariums which you can later build in your home. But that's not the only expansion you'll be getting for free. Survival mode now adds consequences to health, stamina and magicka by forcing you to tend to a plethora of daily needs and maintaining your temperature. And with rare curios, all players now have access to 51 new ingredients from Morrowind and Oblivion. But while these new additions are great, it pales in comparison to the larger scale new quest and dungeon mod hidden beneath Solitude's sewers. Saints and Seducers takes you pretty much across the face of Skyrim to uncover the workings of the return of Sheagora Shivering Isle Sentinels. It includes a number of new creatures that you're only able to encounter within its unique dungeon, and a pretty unique, decently sized quest with alternate endings dependent on your choices. And above all else, for fans of Oblivion's Shivering Isle expansion, it provides a nice nod to its themes and creatures, and also brings in a few new unique armor and weapon sets, which can be obtained and crafted using some of the new orbs after completing the quest line. Saints and Seducers is one of the coolest and the most unique new additions to your game, and really adds a nice sum of playtime and roleplaying possibilities depending on what kind of character you want to be. And while this is the last of the free content, it is far from everything that is included within Anniversary Edition. So let's now depart from the tiny number of small creations included for everyone and move on to the vast number of new quests, locations, creatures, armor and weapons in the full content release. Now we're going to start with all the new armors that are added to your world and specifically we'll start with the alternate armor sets. First we have the Elven Hunter, a set designed to bring a more rural and survivalist variation to the classic Elven plate armor. Stongrim Fur Armor does a similar thing by offering a variation of the Ancient Ord set for colder climates. Ebony Plate provides a more exquisite and intricately designed variation on the fabled black and steel set in vanilla. Dwarven Mail on the other hand draws more similarly to the Sky Oblivion purple and bronze set but more akin to the Skyrim theme. Studded Dragon Scale offers a more adventurous style set for higher level players looking to wear a trophy of their achievements. Daedric Mail introduces a light armor variant of the Blooded Daedric Plate for more versatility and choice. And there is now a fully implemented silver armor set which draws heavily from medieval themes with a touch of spell sword. Orcish Armor now has two new variants to craft and find, the first being a fur insulated heavy armor and the second being a lighter armor set drawing more closely to armor styles you would see in games like Oblivion. Speaking of Oblivion, we now have a leather scout armor which clearly is designed to look somewhat like an Imperial Rogue styled set. Dragon Plate armor has now been expanded to bring a fur variant to brave the colder climates of Skyrim's chilling winds, and Iron now has a completely new variant that really brings a fresh tone to the classic Dragonborn armor we've seen for 10 years. Alternatively, Steel now has a new set akin to that styled in the Elder Scrolls blades which is my personal favorite out of the bunch 
and back to Daedric with a plated version to give you a choice of heavy armour in those later levels of your playthrough. And the same goes for Dwarven, which also has a new plate version for a bit of a change to the norm. Civil War Champion armors now bring a bear-carved Stormcloak Brute along with a Roman-themed Imperial Dragon set. The Divine Crusader introduces sets styled after those acquired in the Knights of the Nine expansion in the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. And Netch Leather does a similar thing but for variants on the light armor mostly found on the Solstone region. Additionally, there is the Redguard Elite armor, which is one of my favorites, and the Lord's Mail reintroduced from previous games. And also one of the best looking in my opinion is the Spell Knight armor sets. And finally is the Vigilant Forcer sets, which as well as buffing the Vigilance of Stendar, it also gives the Silverhand a unique armor set. As mentioned before, each of these new armors can either be acquired in a short quest pertaining to its origin or found in a new location with recipes alongside for crafting. But new armors are only a small part of the overall new content. Now, while I'm saving some of the bigger expansions until last, we are going to visit all of the new player homes you can acquire for pretty much every playstyle. And that begins in the Ratway Sewers with our first Thief Home of choice. Shadowfoot Sanctum is a Riften-based Thief Home which can be purchased in the Ragged Flagon after joining the Thieves' Guild, and also comes with a customary secret chamber to display all of your items you discreetly acquire. Next is the Tundra Homestead a house which is located just on the main road near to Whiterun City, and can be bought from the steward for a quaint little abode to reside within as you venture on the early stages of your playthrough. Scaling up a tad, we have Hendraheim, a Nordic mead hall which can be found on a cliff's edge in the Reach, and really gives me some companions vibe where you could perhaps start your own warrior faction from within. But if you wanted a more quiet life, you could venture down to the Golden Hills Plantation near Rorikstead, where using the Hearthfire system, you can build up a farm, hire workers and run it like a business, but not before completing a quest in uncovering and releasing the lost spirits of the previous inhabitants. But while living a normal life in Whiterun's grassy tundra is great, we can also venture underground. Bloodchill Manor is a vampire-themed home where you will be invited to a mysterious dinner party as a guest. After going through the events of the evening, you will be able to claim the home as yours and live out in the shadows. Another dark-themed necromancer home is Gallows Hall, which actually has one of the more interesting acquisitions from the selection, trapping you inside upon your entry and facing you with a sort of escape room puzzle in order to leave and claim the home. Mirror Watch, on the other hand, is a major tower in the swamps of Morthal. With architectural layouts similar to what you would see in the College of Winterhold, you can use portals to travel between the various floors the home has to offer. And finally is the Dwemer player home, Nushum Thumbs, which is by far the largest of those added in, presenting you with a giant Dwemer house which you'll have to activate various Dwarven servants to help you clean and repair before you're able to live there. And as far as player homes are concerned, that's going to cover all of the new main abodes in this expansion. So now we're going to take a look at all the new spells, weapons, and a few additional armors that come alongside them. And just like the armor showcased earlier, each one of these items, especially the weapons we'll go through in a moment, all have small to sometimes medium side quests and or dungeons in order to acquire. First is the Arcane Pack, which includes two variants on new magical enchanted robes, and a whole bunch of new spells that fit seamlessly into the vanilla game, most of them being higher level tomes which combine two or more elements for new interesting synergies. But on the flip side, we have new spells and robes for necromancers, with the Necromancer's Grimoire, which not only adds some of the coolest dark robes I've seen, but a whole bunch of new summonable creatures for those wishing to meddle in the dark art in order to spawn some pretty powerful demons to do your dark deeds. Next we have a plethora of new gauntlets which are designed to enhance unarmed combat. Each of these can be crafted or purchased and go all the way from iron to dragon plate each with varying levels of effectiveness and in itself completely makes unarmed a fun viable build for a playthrough. But with that being said, now we're going to go over all the new weapons and staves. First we have Goldbrand followed by the Headman's Cleaver, or Chrysomir to pair with the Divine Crusader, or either of the Shadow Wrens for a darker theme. For Archers we now have the Bow of Shadows, or Sheagoras Ruin's Edge, or perhaps the return of the infamous Umbra, or the Skull Crushing Stendar's Hammer. Dawnfang and Duskfang can now be acquired during a cool new dungeon quest. Alternatively, Sunder has returned from Morrowind accompanied by Wraithguard. For Mages we have both the Arm of the Sun or also the Arm of the Moon, or wield Sheagorath's staff, or the staff of Hasadoki. 
As a bonus, there are now new unenchanted staves you can purchase from Neloth, which come ranging from Wood all the way up to Daedric, and pretty much most in between. And finally is crossbows, which have now been given the same treatment as the staves and gauntlets, and also have two new rare elite variants that you can acquire. And just a cherry on top is the new Nordic jewellery, which can be crafted, enchanted and worn at your disposal. Now we've seen some armor, weapons and player homes, we're going to take a look at some of the new locations, dungeons and then creatures you might encounter while venturing across Skyrim. And that starts with one of the coolest new Duemo ruins. Forgotten Seasons adds a massive unique multi-themed dungeon which has you investigating a strange Duemo weather apparatus that will take you on a classic adventure to master this ruin and its new unique items. Dead Man's Dread is a new small island cove off the Solitude Shores which has you battling the spirits of a crew of undead pirates and also allows you to claim Cyrus's armour, weapons and the ship itself as a player. The Contest is a small content add-on which expands a spider infested cave with a new broodmother boss encounter and a unique weapon and gauntlets as a prize. On the other hand, the Grey Cow Returns embarks you on a small journey to carry out a number of thief related tasks in order to adorn the fabled Grey Cow of Nocturnal. Bitter Cup is a new altar which adds three options to choose from, each giving you a different scenario. One of them causes you to be sold to fight in an underground arena against their very own Grand Champion, that if you defeat will award you with the title of Champion of the Fighting Pits and will also allow you to adorn the new helmet worn by your predecessor. Goblins are a new addition straight from Oblivion, adding new creatures, a follower and a short quest to partake in put. Zombies similarly can be encountered at night or at a ritual site where you can acquire the tome to summon them yourself. And wild horses can now be found scattered around the world, some of which are extremely rare and unique. Oh, and horse armor is now returned for purchase at any stable. And while we're touching on mounts, the Saturalia expansion adds a small Christmas themed mount along with new clothing set available for purchase in the snowy plains just west of Dawnstar. And finally to top these quickfire editions off is a plethora of new pets you can acquire in different unique locations and scenarios. And with those just listed along with everything else in this video, it's finally time to move on to the two coolest and largest DLC sized expansions in this update. On the island of Solstein, most believe the Tribunal Temple to be a thing of the past. They assume no one would still worship the old gods. And yet, there are those who remain. Introducing the Ghosts of the Tribunal, a fairly medium to large scale questline which has the player uncover a mysterious new faction whose headquarters are hidden beneath the island. In this, you can choose to aid the rebuilding of this up and coming cult, or eradicate them altogether. Either way, resulting in you being able to acquire a set number of incredible new intricate weapons and Morrowind themed armors, including unique masks that come with varying abilities depicting the so-called living gods of Almalexia, Sotha Sil and Vivek after their disappearance. Ghost of the Tribunal is honestly a really cool addition to the game and much welcomed as a new questline to give the Dunmer of Solstein more lore and depth. But even still, it is completely shadowed by the scale and content of the final edition in this video. The Cause is a huge DLC sized quest that sets you on a mission to investigate the rumblings of the rising Mythic Dawn Order after their defeat in the Oblivion Crisis. Not only does it introduce the cult's new headquarters, but also takes you on an incredible journey to venture within one of the last remaining alien ruins located in Skyrim, where you will begin to uncover the true intentions behind the Mythic Dawn's new founded uprising. For their true goal is to reopen a dormant oblivion gate deep within the mountains, in order to return Maroon Dagon's plight back to Tamriel. And just when you think you've seen it all, this expansion provides so much more. Because you are actually able to enter back into an Oblivion realm akin to those seen in the Elder Scrolls 4, and venture deep across the new Deadland world space, uncovering its Daedric secrets. This expansion is so far one of the coolest quests to exist in Skyrim across all DLCs and vanilla games. 
and doesn't hold back in throwing everything at you in a series of high level dungeons and enemies which leads you abruptly to face a fearsome number of deadly bosses. But I think the rest I'll leave up for you to discover. And that is every single thing that is in the new Skyrim Anniversary Edition. For those that are in the market for a new PC, I've recently partnered with Apex Gaming PCs in order to bring out my own line fit to the specifications I'm running myself. So if that's something that might interest you, you can check out my page in the description and select from any of the three tiers of PCs in my line. And use code BURNS for 5% off site-wide, which when making a big purchase like a PC can actually save you a decent chunk of money. So be sure to check out those if that's something you are considering. Also please let me know what you thought of this video in the comments down below, I'll be reading all of them on this video so give me your thoughts because I'm really interested to see what you guys think. This video took a good number of sleepless nights to make and I'm personally really happy with how it turned out but of course tell me what you did and didn't like and I'll try to incorporate more of that moving forward. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.